Welcome back. If you just join us, you're watching the News at 10 live on Channel Television. A reminder of our top stories. Vice President Professor Yemek Baja today pays condolence visit to a Fenifera leader, Pa Ruben Pasarati, promises the federal government will explore all options towards addressing growing insecurity in Nigeria. Nobel laureate Wale Shoinka advocates a broad-based approach towards addressing the nation's problems, says current challenge are beyond the present government's capacity. President of the Court of Appeal cancels vacation for appeal court justices, citing an almost number of post-2019 general election petitions before the court. And the UN Refugee Agency calls for the dismantling of all detention centers for refugees in Libya, saying they are unfit to house migrants. has more information for you on youtube.com forward slash channels web you can watch our videos you can also watch us on your mobile device via your browser or download the channel tv app for android ios devices from the respective stores besides giving you access to news updates on the go the channels tv channels 24 app have an eyewitness feature that you can use to share pictures videos or news of happenings around you just install the app then tap and swipe to reveal the menu and please follow the instructions now let's go over to some of the stories you sent in, beginning with this video from Magboro in Ogun State showing this vehicle allegedly belonging to the police. According to our eyewitness reporter, well, this van doesn't seem to be in good condition, judging by the smoke from its exhaust pipes. He's worried uh, by the slow response which officers who use this vehicle are likely to offer in cases of emergency. Still on the police is this set of images uh, is from Port Harcourt, the River State capital, showing buildings that reportedly house over 300 policemen and their families. Our eyewitness reporter wonders how much could be expected from the occupants and is calling for urgent intervention by governments and well-meaning individuals. Our final image is from Ijui in Abuja, the federal capital territory, showing the image of what our eyewitness reporter described as one of the city's sewage outlets left in the open is worried by the health implication this portends for everyone and wants the Abuja Environmental Protection Board to take steps to prevent an epidemic. Thank you for sending them in. Please keep them coming. Also remember to indicate the location of your story. A gunman have adopted a senior lecturer with the Taraba State University Jalingo, Mr. Benjamin Ezekiel. The lecturer was abducted in the early hours of today in the state capital after armed assailants stormed his residence shooting sporadically. Confirming the incident to Channel's television, the police public relations officer, DSP David Missal, says he is aware of the abduction and security officials have sworn into action to ensure that the lecturer is rescued. Chairman of the Senior Staff Association of Nigerian Universities, Saraba University Chapter, Mr. Linus Williams adds that the abductors are yet to contact Mr. Benjamin's family with their demands. The President of the Court of Appeal, Justice Zainab Adamobo Fatua, has cancelled this year's annual justice's vacation for the Court of Appeal. A statement from the Court's media officer, Mr. Sadatu Musa, explains that the decision of the President of the Court of Appeal is as a result of the enormous number of petitions before the Court following the 2019 general election. In a two-page circular signed and transmitted to all justices of the Appellate Court on the 2nd of July 2019, Justice Booker noted that since these appeals were time-bound and would arise within the period of the court's vacation on July to October, the need arises for them to be heard and determined within the said period. To enable the court meet these targets, the President of the Court of Appeal directed the presiding justices of the various divisions to draw up a roster in consultation with her office to allow the justices with medical appointments or other pressing family issues travel for not more than 15 days within the period. The release further added that in divisions with three justices, only one judge can travel at a time, and the office of the president of the Court of Appeal is to be immediately notified to form a panel in that justice's absence should the need arise. According to Justice Booker Chua, appeals arising from the national and state assemblies will be heard by a local panel of three members, except where it is controversial. Then the president will constitute and send another panel to hear it. Well, we switch over to 
the fact that despite controversies surrounding the establishment of Catholic colonies across the country, uh, joining us uh, is our in-house data analyst, Babajide Gusomo, who examines the potentials of a national livestock. We'd like to thank you for joining us at this time. Good evening, Millicent. So after the challenges the government's faced with implementing rural settlement, um, that's the program for cattle rearers, but what options exist to minimizing these conflicts, cattle, crop farmers? There are several options. Um, maybe we should look at it from a slightly different perspective. And that's, let's imagine what would happen if there were no more cows in Nigeria. So just one moment. If the price of beef were to go through the roof, which region of Nigeria would be most bothered with the price of beef going beyond the roof? And I'll share some of that um, facts with you tonight, and I think it'll, it'll surprise you. But the first thing we need to talk about is why you and I should be interested about what goes on in the agricultural sector. And listen carefully to this. The National Bureau of Statistics tells us that there are 70 million Nigerians who are involved in some sort of job or the other, full-time and part-time. Well, here's why we should be bothered. Half of Nigerians who are working are in the agricultural sector. In other words, if there's no peace in the agricultural sector, there will be fewer jobs. And if there are fewer, if there are fewer jobs, there will be more crime. And if there's more crime, you and I will, feel, will no longer feel safe. And so everybody should be interested in working together to negotiate peace. And because we have no choice but to negotiate peace. You can't sow violence and reap peace. Neither can you really sow peace and get violence. So the agricultural sector indeed is important for the peace of Nigeria. So that's how much we're losing. But are there relevant data to show that we can have a national livestock transformational plan? There's data everywhere, especially because a lot of Nigerians are concerned about why are we struggling with um, cattle farmers or cattle rearers and crop farming. But the interesting fact is, based on the evidence we have today, less than 5% of cattle rearers own more than 10 cows. That is a fact. Most cattle rearers have less than 10 cows in their, that they are managing. Let's look at the three beefy facts. The three facts that also points to some, some of these challenge, challenges that we face. The first is, who consumes most of the beef? We have the answer, north or south. The evidence shows that 57% of all beef consumed in Nigeria is from southern Nigeria. A quarter, which is the second fact, a quarter of all beef is consumed by families living in the southwest region. Number one in the southwest is Lagos State. Lagos State consumes more beef than any other state in Nigeria. Let's look at the third fact, what is going on and what we can also learn from the United States. And that is, they have over 127 million acres in the United States that they use only for livestock feed. 127 million acres is more than all the land in all the 17 states in southern Nigeria combined. So clearly, we've seen the evidence that most beef is consumed in southern Nigeria, within the southwest, Lagos State. We've seen that agriculture is quite important as well when, it, when we look at the need to have livestock feed, and that is what we should, we should consider. So what lessons can we learn from countries that have large communities of crop, crop farmers? How do we... It depends on how we want to use our land. I think if there's only one solution that we should recommend tonight, it should be for us to consider land reforms. If the United States of America were to be called a different name based on how they use their land, then it should be called the United States of Farming. And why should the USA be called the United States of Farming? Let's look at how America uses its land. It's 1.9 billion acres of land. The fact shows that 84% of the land that makes up contiguous USA is used for pasture, is used for forestry, and is used for cropland. Indeed, only 4% of America's land is used for housing and all the Las Vegas and where we all visit. So most of the land in the United States is used for ranching, used for forestry, and is used for crop farming. And that is how the United States gets their real economic power. 
So it's really the United States of famine. And so clearly this points us to the fact that ranching is a must for the future of Nigeria. Yes, we can negotiate how the ranching will be done. It might not be Ruga, but the evidence shows that countries that have succeeded in agriculture do develop their land for livestock feed, and indeed, they also make sure that they segment their land properly. But today, um, that is not the case. So indeed, we need an agricultural reform, which the National Livestock Transformation Plan tries to address. But before the transformation plan for agriculture, what we need first is a transformation plan for land. And that is because the evidence we have points out that 70% of all agricultural farmers today did not buy their land, they inherited land. And so the first solution is let us focus on land transformation. Oh yes, am I saying agricultural transformation or the livestock transformation plan should be seconded? No, I'm not. But what I'm saying is there are several ways to skin that also might be difficult um, in terms of land reform, as you've mentioned. The role the federal government has to play, the role the state governments as well have to play. Those that have already have laws um, and pre-grazing bills and, you know, the hurt that has occurred from some of the conflict in the past, that's not going away anytime soon. And, but, but what do you see in your crystal ball as to, you know, the future in terms of the livestock and all of the issues? Looking at the future, the future is peace. Indeed, the future lies in how we exploit our agricultural resources. There was a popular Japanese philosopher that said, the ultimate goal of farming isn't the cultivation of crops. The ultimate goal of farming is the cultivation and perfection of the human mind. And so the forecast is we can achieve peace between cattle farmers and cattle rearers if we go on with a multi-dimension approach to it. Let's not just focus on ranching. Ranching is important, which we've seen um, by the evidence we have, but the solution that is across and that lies ahead is looking at multiple dimensions. Indeed, there are multiple dimensions to, to this ball, but Nigerians are really bothered tonight that the ball that they looked at, which wasn't the crystal ball, no. they didn't go as, <laughs> as planned. Well, we would like to thank you, Mama so well. Uh, Channel Television State. The pleasure is always audience. mine. Again, land reforms. All right, you've heard that. Well, when the news at 10 returns, outgoing Dot Consul General explains the Netherlands' enthusiasm to partner with Nigeria in the non oil sector. Please join us again.